The last thing I would want to be is uh, a fan who is expectant or um, entitled or whatever word you want to use really about facing a team like Bournemouth today. I, I can't deny that I've come here expecting City to win and probably comfortably. But you never know in football uh, and I've been on the other end of these results as a fan who's been following City all my life since back in the 1970s. So I wonder what it's like for Bournemouth fans today. And of course, I never know who I'm gonna bump into. So let's see what the mood is today for City against Bournemouth in the Premier League. It's a top class game. I mean, Bournemouth, obviously, everybody will be thinking City are gonna win it easy. You can't, you can't think like that. Pep won't be thinking like that because they'll, they'll come here and do what a lot of teams do. You see 10 men behind the ball, make it hard. So they'll just be professional like they normally are, City. Pep said he's a big hangover from the treble, maybe, which happens. Uh, but I'm wearing Bernard Olfers hat today, so bring him good luck. Tell me what you think about today, because on paper it looks like a straightforward game, doesn't it? Well, it does. Um, it's, a, it's a tempting fixture for a Manchester City person, but we've learned uh, to our cost over the many, many years never to take anything for granted. It's not seriously suggesting that City could slip up today. No, I'm just um, I'm trying to remain humble, which is uh, very difficult this, these days when our team is uh, winning so many trophies. But realistically, you know, everybody's got a puncher's chance, but I would be really shocked if we didn't win today. I think the odds on a, a victory for Bournemouth are 25 to 1. You don't often get that in a two-horse race, do you? No, but Fred, Fred's right what he says. We can't uh, count the chickens. On paper, we are by far the better team. On form, we are as well. So, I mean, to be honest, I can't see us losing. I can't see us slipping up. Um, I just think we've got too much for them and we'll come away with the three points. What do you think it feels like to be a Bournemouth fan coming here today? I think... Uh, <laughs> Oh, should be. I think they'll enjoy it because you're coming to watch probably the best uh, club team in the world. You know, and all the players that we've got on show, they'll be putting up a fight. Don't forget, they they won't be coming here to roll over. Bournemouth, they've got some decent players, a uh, decent side as well. Uh, but I think the majority of the teams that come here, they'll they come from all over the world to watch us play football. And I think the Bournemouth fans will be the same. Enjoy the game, boys. Cheers, Cheers easy. Thanks, see you. So as a Bournemouth fan, you've obviously travelled a long way for this we game. We have indeed. What, what are you expecting from today? You're looking forward to it to begin uh, with, yeah, are you of expecting course. a... Yeah, just expecting a performance. Um, obviously the record against City is, well, is uh, non-existent. We, we've not taken a point or few in any of the Premiership games that we've played. So we're looking really for, for that first point. I'm not holding my breath today, but hey, it's, uh, we're going to see some world-class players anyway, aren't we? So. So yeah, just hope for the best and uh, what we want is a good performance from, from our team. Uh, you know well that City have not always been what they are now no. and I can remember many, many years ago saying to my wife before a trip to Southampton, so the reverse sort of fixture that you're doing, and she said, how do you think they'll go on today? And I said, oh, they'll get beat. And she said, well, why are you going then? I said, because I support my team. Yeah, is that basically your absolutely essence Absolutely, well? 100%. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, I think you do that, don't you? Once you have a club loyalty, you stick with it and you stick behind your team. And as I say, and perhaps I shouldn't say it, but City are a fabulous team. They've got fabulous players. I mean, once in a lifetime, this generation of City players. And, you know, any true football supporter would want to see that quality playing. And I'm here to watch Bournemouth play. I'm here to watch Bournemouth win. But I'm also here to watch the quality that's going to be on that field. So, well, enjoy the yeah. game and have a safe trip home. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. You've come a long way, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are you expecting from today? Well, I expect City to win 4-1. Um, no disrespect to Bournemouth, but I don't think we got the players. They ain't hungry enough for it. I don't know why they got rid of the other manager and brought the new one in, because at the end of the day, he did keep them up. So I am expecting us to get beat. Do you come here, though, thinking all right, we're going to get beat, but I'm going to see one of the best teams in the world. Well, is it hard to take that? It is. It is. So you are the best team in the world at the moment. Um, I wouldn't say I'm coming here to see. You never know; it could go the other way. Bournemouth could nick it, nick a go, and that could be a one-nil. Of course, of course. You know, and but my other lad here, he's a United fan as well. And you look how big United were, but they ain't in the moment. So, True. so now I. You know, I take my hat off to see. 
City is um, a good team, got good players, got a good manager. And I think the manager makes a big difference to a club like City. So if Ireland scores a trick today, do you, you go home back to Bournemouth thinking, I saw Ireland score a trick, or do you go away thinking, oh no? Well, I think because I think um, we beat one last week, they thought, oh, that's a bonus. It, well, it's not a bonus because they knew they're going to come to City and look out. I have it as it boosted them up. I know they played Liverpool on Wednesday, Bournemouth. Um, it was only 2 1, but he didn't have a top squad out. He only had Salah on Liverpool. So at the end of the day, he was only playing a second team. But they didn't do that, that bad against Liverpool at home. So we have to what wait and see. Today? I don't know. Probably Man City are going to smash them, but hopefully Ball can win. You never know, dear. You no. never know. Well, enjoy your trip. And you. Thanks for chatting to me. Cheers. Uh, well, I was uh, talking to me before he's a Bournemouth fan and said, joking about, and said 5 0. And D put back, oh, it's always going to be 6 0 to you. So, can only see it all. Tough side, though, Bournemouth. Like, fighting for the places and all that down below. So, can only see what they can throw at us. You won't be old enough to remember when City were on the end of them sort of thrashings in the past, will you? No, but my dad, who's just there next to us, brought us up in videos. So, <laughs> so you don't take it for granted? No, definitely not, definitely not. So, go on, what do you, what, what do you uh, Well, we're still Man City, so you never know. It could be, we could get beat 1 0. You know, we might score an own goal and they, you know, they don't actually shoot a goal. Uh, Seriously, though? Yeah, well, just. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I don't want to say arrogant. No, that's the last thing I want to no, do. So, but... No, I'd never be arrogant because, you know, my, my first game was 1974. Um, Call Francis Lee. Um, so I know all the times, all the crap we've been through. Uh, so, no, never take it for granted. And uh, save every minute. To... Oh, yeah, obviously now, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, not long ago, uh, Stuart Pearce, was it 230 odd days without scoring at home? That was fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, the best part of that was being it on the sideline. Apart from that, yeah. No, I think we'll win. I hope we win, but I'll never take it for granted. You know, That's you don't a know. Typical city fan. Well, yeah, old school, old school. Did you call them legacy fans these days? I'm just a city fan. Every game now is uh, exciting because the Premier League's so unpredictable. Or oh, even against Bournemouth. Yes, because they came with a plan. Nobody ever comes here anymore now to attack us. They come with a plan and the least that they can expect is a draw. So it's never ever going to be a goal fest. It may well be, but we never come now expecting. Although, you know, we've got to pinch yourself to be a City fan these days because you've never seen stuff like this now. We've got the greatest players, the best thing. It, it's just an absolutely fantastic time to be a City fan. But never take anything for granted because it comes back to bite your bum. Is that how you feel as well? Yeah, definitely. I was looking, I think we beat them 4 0, was it, last year? And maybe 3 0 the year before. So the tendency is to come and uh, think, well, it's going to be the same again. But, like Tony said, the teams come and they have a game plan. They might put two or three players on. If Doku's playing today, they might double up on him. They might be marking. I think they marked Harland out of the game last year. But we had other scorers. You know, like Alvarez and people like that. So we've always got options B and C now nowadays. So I'm optimistic, but I wouldn't be surprised if we only draw today. This is the I'm old school city, so I'm always on that pessimistic side. <laughs> Your story because uh, you're a city fan, but you but you come from Bournemouth. Yeah, I've come from Pool, uh, which is next door to Bournemouth. I've uh, lived down there 12 years. Only got here at quarter past one. I went down through work. Uh, Rivey at Stockport closed and uh, I came to Poole, I was going to say here, but back up here. I don't get so many City games now, I only get up, like a few London ones, I went to West Ham and uh, I'm asking me to meet a mate who's a Bournemouth fan, but he's probably had the journey I had, journey I had this morning, it was terrible, the weather was really, really poor, but... Uh, You've got a unique insight because I've been asking a couple of Bournemouth fans <laughs> what they're expecting today, thinking well, that City are probably going to win comfortably. Yeah, they, they should do. I mean, the, the goalkeeper they got in, I know he wasn't very popular, this Neto character. They got another lad in, but uh, you can't beat Bournemouth, mate, no disrespect. You know, it's like my local team, Pool Borough. But uh, going on about six grades to come back, and you know, I was saying earlier on about the days we played 
Bournemouth at Main Road when we were 3 0 up at half time. And uh, the story of Reading Paul Lake's book was uh, Eddie Lards coming, the late great Eddie Lards came in the dressing room at half time and uh, just telling them jokes and all that lot. And old Harry heard about it, our mate Harry. I've only met him a couple of times. And uh, Sam Banks Harry, and he fired him up. And Ian Bishop got a free kick and had a Luther Blissett last minute penalty. And we had to win at Bradford a week later or get a draw. That was it. Tricky Trev. Then with the days, and I think it was Palace had Brighton Wright playing, and uh, they were on his tails that day. And we, anyway, we did it in typical city. And yeah, it was good times. Good times, you know. But you look win today, though, though. Oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, yeah you can't beat Bournemouth. That's Bournemouth. Bournemouth's ground. I play football past it on a Thursday night, and where they play football is bigger. I'll leave it at that because there might be some Bournemouth fans watching and might not get back to Dorset. But brilliant. Should win today. Should do. Solanke's a bit of a player for them, and uh, they got a lad who pet lights Bristol City boy last season. Who's uh, just come from injury. I can't remember his name, uh, but he should be okay. You can beat them. Well, they'll give us more of the game than you know who did last week. <laughs> That first half was in three stages. I think the first 30 minutes, I think the defensive game plan of Bournemouth was there for everybody to see. They just decided to play five centre, five centre backs, five in the back, four in the midfield, box it off and leave Salanti up top on his own. It worked for 30 minutes, but as soon as Man City opened the door, it sort of capitulated. You're waiting for that little bit of quality, and I've just tipped up probably the three players that I thought were going to open the door in Bernardo Silva, in Alvarez, in Doku. And fortunately for Man City, they've come to the party. To say that they've scored three goals and Erling Haaland hasn't been involved in any one of them three goals is quite phenomenal. And then they've just relaxed a little bit now, game over basically. It's Stammen's limitation second half where Bournemouth are concerned. And if Bournemouth want to go home, not with something in the bag, but just a little bit of pride, they've got to come to the party defensively. I don't think the quite has been there 100%. I think the three centre halves have been picked on to a certain extent with players that can move the ball. You, do, you don't want that, you want your fullbacks in them positions. Bottom line is, I think this could be five or six to Man City in the second half. A cheeky one then from me, you wouldn't be out on the pitch then with a soul sat round you like you did famously for Hull. I don't think for one minute uh, Bournemouth uh, haven't turned up uh, for the manager. It's just a case of, I know I know the main reason why I did that is when I was at Hull City. I, I had a couple of players that broke discipline procedures and that's one of the main reasons, plus we had six and a half thousand travelling fans. They've got a couple of thousand that have travelled from the South Coast, it's a long way for Bournemouth um, supporters, it's a long way for the team. But you knew what was coming, and Man City have provided, they've actually showed you what a top, top team they are. I think of late, probably three or four games ago, when City went through that little bit of a blip, where they got beat off Wolves, they got beat off uh, Newcastle, they're certainly back to their best with the ball. Defensively, you haven't been asked a question today. I'd love to see a Man City against the Newcastle, against the Manchester United to a certain extent, which is the weight, the, the slate where that's concerned. I think they're streets ahead of Man U. But against the Liverpool, against the Arsenal, you're going up a notch in terms of what they've got to do defensively. They haven't been asked a question defensively. If I, if I was still playing, I think I could play in the middle of in the middle of the back four for Man City at the moment. Stones has got a cigar on, Akanji hasn't broke sweat, got himself a goal with one off his back. The fullbacks have never been asked a question. I think if, if Kyle Walker is 34, 35 now, and I'm not doing him this service, he could play till he's 55 with that kind of pace. Um, they're just a different breed at the moment. I'd love to come to a game against an Arsenal, against a, a Liverpool, to see what City are like under a little bit of pressure. Today, I'm not going to see that. Very entertaining. We took a little bit to get going, but I thought Jeremy Docking well deserved his round of the match. 
great performance, took on players, scored himself and set up other goals. So for me, man of the match, Jeremy Dockin. That was pretty comfortable in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. I mean, he's a great, he's a great player already and yet he's just joined us. So happy days for City. Four in a row, hopefully. All the best for this season. Absolutely brilliant. I think uh, them scoring made them switch back on again. So a great result. Who was your man of the match? Was it the man that got the award? Duncan? Absolutely, definitely, yeah. They got, special, didn't they? Yeah, they got it right. They definitely got that right. But it was a great game. Uh, I could see it. once it went 3 0 up, it was just. It was basically planning for Tuesday. Uh, I'm glad the goals went in as early because if, if the game had carried on at nil nil for so long, there might be more injuries. And I hope Harlan's injuries are bad. I hope it's just a spray. And we'll see it again. I think young boys were a very, were a much better team than I gave them credit for on Tuesday. I thought we'd, we'd wipe the floor with them, and we didn't. And Pep was man man managing that game because he brought players on, took players off. That's the luxury City you've got when you're three or four nil up, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah. And it's a, it's a good job because otherwise, uh, and we do have an injury crisis, we would be in trouble. But like I say, bring on Tuesday. Hopefully, that'll give us a 12 points, win the group, and happy days, eh? Absolutely amazing, fantastic game. Uh, we've got a player in, De in Deco, haven't we? It's uh, fantastic, such skills, amazing. Exciting player. Exciting player, he can do anything, no, nobody can get anywhere near him. Absolutely amazing, great day, fantastic. Well well Giants, the right choice of the man of the yeah. match. Yeah, you got it right today. Yeah, 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 got it right today. Four assists and two goals, you can't complain about that. Is there that. any play you've seen in the past? I mean, I can see Colin Bell up there, my ear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know Colin Bell wasn't a dribbler, but does Doku remind you of anybody? He reminded me of uh, Peter Barnes. Yeah, very much so. Peter Barnes. Yeah, yeah. When he first came in. Yeah. Shame I have to remember it. <laughs> Shows the age. <laughs> Holy Bird, Ian, six one. They love Holy Birds at the Etihad, don't we? Um, yeah, it was a, it was a slow burner. Uh, they sat deep, low block. We knew what we were uh, we were expecting with Bournemouth. We knew what we were expecting you know, with their gaffer as well. They're in a bit of trouble, aren't they, down there in the Premier League? They got the job done. Six goals. Could have been more, should have been a cricket score. Doku is electric, as I said, frightening him. It's like watching a regeneration of Shawnee Wright again. We've not had anybody like that since him. This guy's just musty. There you have it then. Doku dazzles again. Uh, and another six goal hole for City. Uh, I do have a little bit of sympathy for those Bournemouth supporters. We've been in that position. I've been in that position in years gone by when City have... Uh, had a hammer in and it's been a long journey home so I know what it's like but this is City's time and uh, I for one I'm going to enjoy every minute of it thanks to motoringoffencelawyers.com to Timson and of course to RRG group and to you for contributing if you have done or for watching really appreciate it I'll see you again for the, uh, the Young Boys one uh, on Tuesday and the audio podcast which we'll be recording this evening actually will feature Jason Beckford, remember him from years gone by, uh, him and Darren of course, two brothers who played for City, so uh, download that from Soundcloud, but in the meantime, thanks very much for watching this and I'll uh, see you again and isn't it great to be a blue?